Hey, get your popcorn. You know what time it is. Game time. Let's get it. Woo! Yeah! It's a blockbuster. Bowling. Four teams. Two games. One blockbuster night, baby. Whatever. Big Blue Nation is here. Let's go. Kentucky. Boom. 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 Great energy in the building. Rock, Chalk, Jayhawk. Kansas keeps it all alive. The side of Hayden, Hank, Gar, and Lennon. Slamming and bam, bam, and you feel me? Oh, shake and bake. Got him. Wait a minute. Break it down. Number one is in the building. Boy, I'm doing good. How about you? And Michigan State. Oh. We got a good one, baby. Yes. Break it down. That's the definition of hot. Bridges. Tum Tum. I see you, fam. Oh. Let's go struggle. Don't hate. Y'all know Duke got what it takes. Let's get it. Go. It's a blockbuster in Chi-Town. This is incredible. We got this at the Champions Classic. Welcome to the State Farm Champions Classic, an ESPN Sonic blockbuster. And welcome to what is, without doubt, one of the most interesting, one of the most special nights of the college basketball calendar. We've got four iconic programs, four Hall of Fame coaches, and four highly ranked teams getting ready to do battle tonight here at the United Center in Chicago. Hi, everybody, and welcome inside the building. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, very excited to bring this to you. The second game, Kentucky and Kansas, you saw the first game, number one Duke, number two Michigan State. Let's start with the Blue Devils, who bring in a tremendous freshman class and really have an amazing array of talent. Duke is the most talented team in the country. They're bigger than they've ever been under Mike Krzyzewski. They can really run the floor, tremendous length. But a real key is going to be the play of Grayson Allen. Uh, Grayson Allen looks refreshed. He looks great. But he's blending around these four outstanding freshmen. Trayvon Duvall is going to have to have a great game, not turn the ball over. Grayson Allen shooting the ball extremely well in the first two games of the season for the Duke Blue Devils. He's knocked down 10 of his 15 threes. But obviously, they step up a level in competition, taking on Michigan State here tonight. All right. The Spartans, let's talk about them. They are ranked second in the country. Maybe the biggest news in terms of who was going and who was staying in the offseason was Miles Bridges returning to East Lansing for his sophomore year, part of a great sophomore class. Well, Miles Bridges is a national player of the year candidate, the best dunker in college basketball. And what he does is he's the headliner of a grizzled group of veterans, <laughs> four sophomores yep. that have a, a year of experience. But that's really significant in this game. And Michigan State is big. They can also run the floor and they can really rebound. They cannot turn the ball over. Uh, Izzo calls it turnovers for touchdowns. They can't give up layups. Two big, deep, talented teams, number one and number two, Duke and Michigan State, here tonight. Time now for the pregame festivities. Let's go to the PA announcer, Gene Honda. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and direct your attention to center court, where the Knights' colors are proudly presented by the Knights of Columbus from Chicago, Illinois. I ask you please remain standing while we honor America and celebrate its freedom and those who protect it with the singing of our national anthem. Here to sing the Star Spangled Banner, please welcome Chicago native Melissa Rodriguez. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so bright At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket ran That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land and of the free And of Yeah. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, Melissa Rodriguez. That's a way to get it started here in Chicago. And now with a monitor, monitor is out. As we have Duke and Michigan State, who have a pretty good amount of history between one another, and the Blue Devils have dominated. They have won 10 of the previous 12 meetings. The last three have been double-digit wins by 10 or more points. They've met five times in the NCAA tournament. The only time Michigan State won in the tournament against Duke was back in 2005. And the biggest win for Duke over Michigan State was in the 1999 Final Four when Duke was number one. Michigan State was number two as we take a look now at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster. Just the eighth time, Jay, in the last 20 years that number one will meet number two the last time that incredible triple overtime game between Kansas and Oklahoma back in January of 2016. It's time now for tonight's starting lineups. Back to Gene Honda. For the Duke Blue Devils. And for the 6'10 freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, number 34, Wendell Carter Jr. And for the 6'11 freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, number 35, Marvin Bagley III. And guard a 6'3 freshman from Newcastle, Delaware, number one, Trayvon Duval. That guard, a freshman from Columbus, Ohio, number two, Gary Trent, Jr. And a guard, a 6'5", senior from Jacksonville, Florida, number three, Grayson Allen. The head coach for the Duke Blue Devils is Mike Krzyzewski. Now the Michigan State starting lineup being introduced to the crowd here at the United Center with a lot of optimism, excitement about the kind of year that the Spartans could have with Miles Bridges coming back for his sophomore season. Michigan State Spartans. That guard, a six-foot sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number five, Cassius Winston. That guard, a six-five sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama, number one, Joshua Langford. That forward, a six-eleven freshman from Carmel, Indiana, number two, Jaron Jackson Jr. That forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Gahana, Ohio, number 44, Nick Ward. And a guard forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Flint, Michigan, number 22, Miles Bridges. The head coach of the Michigan State Spartans is Tom Izzo. So there you have it, the starting lineups for number one Duke, number two Michigan State here in Chicago with the first game of two here with the State Farm Champions Classic with number four Kansas and number seven Kentucky still to come. Let's bring in the third member of our team tonight. Here's Maria Taylor. Well, Dan, we know that Dan or Duke is starting a very, very, very young freshman class. Four starters in the lineup right now for the first time since the 80s. And when I talk to Grayson Allen about what it's like adding a lot of those new key components to their starting lineup, he said the key right now is that they're playing with a lot of hustle and heart. And it's been a lot easier than they once thought. And he pointed to Marvin Bagley, only arriving in August, but it only took him two days to acclimate himself to the Duke system. Yes. All right, Maria, thank you. A, a very lively game day walkthrough for the Duke Blue Devils, and you could say the same for Michigan State. These are two teams where you can see the players really enjoy the camaraderie that exists. Well, they seem to really like one another, but they, the enthusiasm from both teams was really impressive how they got up and down the floor. They worked hard in the hour they were on this floor. Just after 6 o'clock local time, the crowd's still filing in here in Chicago as we are ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. Here in Chicago, Ted Valentine, Lamont Simpson, and Pat Driscoll. 
the officiating crew Michigan State in white Duke in road blue and we are ready to go in the first of two of what should be a fantastic night we are going to learn a lot about some of the top programs in college basketball with what we see in the next few hours here in Chicago. Duke may be a very young team with those four freshmen in the starting lineup, but this is a team that has great size and really impressive length. Duke could wind up playing a fair amount of zone in this game, which could cause Michigan State quite a few problems. And the Blue Devils control the opening tip. This is Trayvon Duval, point guard, one of four freshmen in the starting lineup for the Blue Devils, along with the senior, Grayson Allen. And Joshua Langford guarding Allen out of the gate. Allen shooting 10 of 15 from three to start the season. Wendell Carter misses the left-hand hook. And back come the Spartans again, dominated by their sophomore class. Maybe the X factor for this team at the point, Cassius Winston. Cassius Winston, the best passer in the Big Ten, maybe the best passer in the country. And Duke starts in a 2-3 zone with that great length. Miles Bridges tries to knock down the three, around and out, and back come the Blue Devils. But Dan Trayvon Duvall with the ball in his hands now did a really good job after that first miss by putting pressure on the outlet pass, jamming it, and not letting this break get started, because this is where Michigan State's at its best. They love to run. Joshua Langford lays it into the Spartans on the board first. Michigan State can really run. This is an outstanding transition team. Is Duke as good a running team as Michigan State is? Well, they can be, but they're not yet. That is Gary Trent Jr. And back at the other end, they're running again, and Nick Ward slams it home. That's where the freshman shows through. After a made field goal, they give up a bucket. That that couldn't have been more than two seconds after it went through yep. Duke's basket. The other end, Ward's dunking it. Amazing, the state of college basketball. These are the top two ranked teams in the country. And this, as Marvin Bagley the third slams it home, he's had two outstanding games for Duke. Of the ten starters, we've got five freshmen, four sophomores out there. And ever since Tom Izzo took over for the late great Judd Heathcote, Michigan State has run a numbered break, and they get the ball up court quickly. Joshua Langford laying it in. And then the next possession, after a made field goal, Nick Ward, a rim run right down the middle, getting a dunk. Those are as easy as easy baskets get. But you have to work really hard to get easy baskets. A rejection by Bridges. Duval with the air and pass to Michigan State's got it. And they're looking to run again. Look at Ward get down the floor. Nick Ward did not do that a year ago. In much better condition. That's two rim runs in a row by the big guy. Ward is down about 10 or 15 pounds from last year. Down about 35 pounds from the beginning of last season. Before play began. Carter inside. Good help there by Jaron Jackson Jr. Michigan State making a concerted effort to run the floor and that puts a ton of pressure on Duke's big guys who can run the floor very well themselves But really what's making the difference are the first couple steps Michigan State's older guys are tearing out and Duke's kind of just getting started And they're they're a couple steps behind because they're a couple steps behind at the very beginning First subs of the night and you can't blame both coaches for going to the bench early given the pace of this game Marquise Bolden uh, sophomore, 6'11 sophomore, had some injuries last year, especially at the beginning of the year. He checks in for Duke. And Gavin Schilling, a uh, fifth-year senior, remember he missed all of last year with a knee injury. He was from Chicago, They're born in Germany, spent a few years in France as a kid, but spent a lot of time in his childhood right here in Chicago. Trent with a miss. Bagley keeps it alive. Oh, the body on Gavin Schilling is amazing. He was created in a lab somewhere. <laughs> They didn't have that lab back in the 80s? No. no. <laughs> and I certainly wasn't in it. Michigan State looking to push again. Bridges off to Jackson at the elbow. He's got Grayson Allen on him. And turns it over. Numbers for Duke. Duval with a Euro oh. step and what a block by Bridges. Allen steps in, kicks it out. Trent. And another offensive rebound this time. It's Bagley who's had... 20 rebounds in the first two games of the season. Trent will never get a more wide open look, but he left it short. What an amazing block by Miles Bridges. I mean, Trayvon Duvall was running right up his back. That was big time athleticism to make that play. Duke staying in the 2-3 zone. 
Now, Regan State going to look to get it into the middle. One guy that can operate there is Patrick Winston and make plays there. There he goes. Langford. Jackson. And a foul and a chance for three. Right now, Michigan State is doing what it does best. Fast break and offensive rebound. You know, when Tom Izzo first got this job, rebounding became his focus because he felt like his team couldn't score. They were going to have to go get second shots. And they have really carried that through over the last 20 years. Every year, Michigan State's at or near the top of the country. So Jackson to the line, outstanding freshman. As Bridges sits down, maybe just to get him a bit of a breather going into the under-16 media timeout. If Jaron Jackson Jr. sounds a little familiar, his dad was a very good player at Georgetown and part of a, an NBA championship team with San Antonio. Well, Jaron Jackson Jr. is already a really good player. He's just a freshman. His length is off the charts. He's going to have to work on his shooting a little bit. I you may have noticed there's no rotation on that shot right now at all. Duval fouled on the drive. And we'll step aside four minutes in. When we come back, we'll reap the best day that Tom Izzo had this past offseason. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Dollar General, the official discount retailer of the Big 12. And Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan. Every thread counts. Welcome back. You're watching ESPN's Sonic Blockbuster. Duke and Michigan State here in the State Farm and Champions Classic. And Michigan State up 8-4. One of the reasons why Miles Bridges is back. Shocked everybody by deciding to come back for his sophomore season. A great day for Tom Izzo in the program. I want to thank God for this opportunity I got um, to either reach my dreams in the NBA or stay here with my teammates. But um, I got some unfinished business here. And I, I'm just saying, I, I, I want to stay. I, I'm, <laughs> I want to win a national championship. Three more years! Three more years! Now that might be a little bit overly optimistic for Tom Izzo, but he'll take <laughs> one more year. The sophomore season, again, a National Player of the Year candidate. This is brought to you by The Last Jedi, the Star Wars movie coming out over the holidays. Miles Bridges, he may not actually improve his draft stock, but that wasn't what it was about for Miles Bridges coming back, right? No, he enjoys being in college. At least, at least that's what he said. He's got some great teammates, and he is a great teammate himself. And, look, he's a great kid whether he went pro or not. So if he had gone pro, he's the same great kid. Selfishly, I mean, I'm glad he's back because I get to watch him Absolutely. more. And he's, he's compelling to watch. His goals, he says, to win a national championship, become a better player, and be in a, in a, in a better position to move on to the NBA, to head to the next stage of life by getting one more year under his belt. And boy, will he leave a legacy uh, in East Lansing uh, if the Spartans can have the kind of year they are hopeful of this year. Joshua Langford, the only Michigan State starter in. There's the guy that needs to knock some shots down. McQuay, he aired it. Matt McQuay didn't shoot the ball as well last year his sophomore season as he did as a freshman. Now he's battling some injuries last year as well. And now he's called for a touch foul out beyond the arc, and that'll be three free throws. Just caught him on the arm after the shot was released. And he did touch him. Grayson Allen has started the year very hot. The Duke Blue Devils winning the first two games of their season, beating Elon by 31, beating Utah Valley by 30. And in those games, Jay, Allen has looked very good, made 10 of his 15 threes. What are you expecting from him in his senior season? Well, he's got to be a great leader. And he looks he looked fantastic his first two games. He's healthy, uh, and he looks refreshed. He took about three months off over the summer, got away from basketball. And... Uh, 
his coaching staff said they wanted him to fall in love with the game again. Obviously, last year, a difficult year, both on and off the floor for Grayson Allen, but he looks completely refreshed this year. And the first thing you said was not be a great player, be a great leader. He's out there, at least in the starting lineup, with a four freshman. The pass. Great ball movement and Schilling with the finish on the assist from Kenny Goins. And you move the ball from side to side, then get it into the middle. And Kenny Goins was behind the zone and hit the baseline. That was beautifully executed by Michigan State. Bagley with a bit of a size mismatch on Goins, who's used to playing against bigger people. Bagley left-handed, but he turned it over on the track. When Michigan State got the ball into the middle, oftentimes what that does is make the defense contract. And Goins right behind, you got Marcus Marquise Bolden coming up to get the ball, and that left the baseline wide open for the easy dunk and the great catch by Gavin Schilling. Duke staying in the 2-3 zone, and Michigan State up two, just over five minutes in. Oftentimes, you'll see Cassius Winston sneak into the middle, and he can be a great playmaker in the middle of this zone. Jackson in the middle right now. Here comes Bridges. Right now, Michigan State just throwing around the perimeter. That's where they need to get him. Jackson, the turnaround, and did it go in on its own, or did Schilling slam it down? Schilling Duke touched bench it. saying that he was in the cylinder. Yeah, that looked like basket interference yeah. for my seat. The basket counts the lead up to four. All the points tonight for Michigan State in the paint. Allen, no. Badly rejected by Jackson. Winston coast to coast. And Michigan State could reset. Boy, Michigan State is doing some protecting of the rim here in the early going. Well, Jared Jackson's a big time player. Turns it over here and a chance for Duke to run. Oh, Duvall. What a sweet feed from Duval. Grayson Allen looking to the heavens, unhappy with himself that he couldn't finish. Michigan State is a great rebounding team. Gavin Schilling doesn't get blocked out here, but that ball is in the cylinder. There's no question about it. So a break for the Spartans as the bucket counts. And Mike Krzyzewski had a lot of really good things to say during the shoot-around today about the guy at the free-throw line right now. Wendell Carter Jr., 6'10 freshman from Atlanta. I referred to him as a big in as I was asking a question to Coach K about him, he said, no, he's not a big. He said he's a great basketball player who happens to be big. What does Coach K really like about Carter? Well, first, do you think Coach K is going to let a Canadian have the last <laughs> word on basketball? Absolutely. He's going to put the as coach of the That's USA point, national team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has, Wendell Carter has been better than advertised, and he was advertised as a top ten player. A really smart basketball player with a great basketball IQ. Another guy that plays above the rim, a big-time rebounder. Uh, he, he's going to be a great player. Some ball pressure here by the Blue Devils. And Winston will get it over. Winston still going and finally draws the foul. Duke with some full court pressure, a one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. And Michigan State did not beat that very effect, uh, efficiently. Duke, as we mentioned, Jay, they beat Nilon and Utah Valley for the four freshmen in the starting lineup for Duke. What is this game like? A, a step up to this level of intensity and opposition and so forth? Well, it, it's a big difference. Obviously playing at home against Utah Valley and Elon to a game where the lights couldn't be brighter in a one versus two game. And playing against a team that's older. And they're, they're physically, I mean, Michigan State is a little bit more physical at this stage of their career. Carter turns it over. But right now, Michigan State feels like they have the upper hand in this game and has played much better, yet they're only up a bucket. Yep. This is the seventh year of the State Farm Champions Classic. And of the four schools, Kentucky's got the best record at four and two, Kansas two and four. They'll meet in the late game tonight. Both Duke and Michigan State three and three coming into this one. And Ward will head to the free throw line. Great set play run by Tom Izzo there. A little bit of an overload on the weak side. You got Jackson coming right into the middle. That left Nick Ward wide open at the basket. And the bottom line of that zone can't guard all three guys. Ward a guy last year, about 19 minutes per game. That's a, a 
conditioning issues. Just didn't have the stamina to play longer stretches. Also had some foul trouble. They're hoping for more minutes out of him this year. Double header from the NBA on ESPN tomorrow night. Beginning with LeBron of the Cavs taking on the Hornets at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And in the second game, there's young, interesting Philadelphia 76ers taking on Lonzo Ball and the Lakers. Coverage tips with NBA countdown charged by Mountain Dew at 7 o'clock Eastern tomorrow. You, know, you mentioned Nick Ward. I don't know that Michigan State has to play him more minutes this year, but every every game last year started out with Tom Izzo and the staff telling Nick Ward, now Nick, don't foul <laughs> Well, now they've got the depth with Schilling back, with Jackson, with Ben Carter, a sixth-year senior back from an injury as Gary Trent Jr. knocks it down. We started to say the name sounds familiar. His dad was the shack of the map. He was at Ohio University back in the day and went on to have an NBA career. A long NBA career. Yeah. The son of the shack of the map. <laughs> and now Michigan State turning the ball over a little bit. Jordan Goldwire forcing the turnover as he comes in to play the point. Bagley with yet another offensive rebound and he converts. Covers so much ground. Always looking to get back to that left hand. Marvin Bagley the third left handed as is Nick Ward. Another great play. And a block at the rim. Both Bagley and Javon Delorier were there. There are some big time athletes in this game. Goldwire at the point right now for Duval, and Duke will slow it down. Allen creates a little space, soft touch. Really good body control by Grayson Allen. Coming off the ball screen, getting downhill into the lane. It's amazing. A lot of times last year, maybe the first three years of his career, Grayson Allen would drive into the, the lane and wind up on his back. And that's not happening as much this year. Again, good ball movement, and again a rejection by the Blue Devils. Nick, uh, Nick Ward looking for the foul. He just needs to run the floor. And it'll be out of bounds to Duke when we come back. Also when we come back, we'll get to know Marvin Bagley III, one of the top players one of the top incoming freshmen of the college basketball game this year. Better get to know him quick. Who am I? I'm a freshman forward for the Duke Blue Devils. Three things you didn't know about me. I played in the Drew League alongside James Harden and CP3. My dad was born right here in Durham and played for North Carolina a and My first scholarship offer was in the seventh grade. Who am I? I am Marvin Bagley III. And a young man who reclassified from next year into this year immediately became the top-ranked recruit of this incoming freshman class. For more on Marvin Bagley III, here's Maria Taylor. Well, you know, Dan, Marvin says he's a self-proclaimed gym rat. He'll get to practice two hours early just to work on his ball handling. He really wants to work on finishing around the basket, being strong, and being in better shape. So he'll get in there and do extra conditioning. And Grayson Allen says it's so easy to play with him because his basketball IQ is high. He catches everything, and he's really good around the rim right now. Jay, what's the best part of his game in your opinion? Well, his rebounding. He's already got five offensive rebounds. He's always around the ball. He's an extraordinarily hard worker, and he changes ends with incredible speed. I think he's just scratching the surface of how good he can be as an offensive player. Uh, he needs to work on his right hand. He's, he's a dominant left-hand player, but he's unique. You do not see guys like Marvin Bagley is third very often. Ben Carter in to try and defend him. Carter, as we mentioned, a sixth-year senior. Suffered a season-ending knee injury at the beginning of last year. Was granted a sixth-year of eligibility. He had previously transferred to East Lansing. Goldwire for three. Jordan Goldwire, 6'2", freshman out of North Cross, Georgia. And Duke is on an 11-0 run right now. Those Blue Devils have been able to turn over Michigan State. They've challenged Nick Ward several times at the rim and have turned some defense into offense. That was a really good pass by Gary Trent to Jordan Goldwire, who was ready to shoot when he caught it. Duke sticking with this 2-3 zone. Very Bayheim-esque. Bridges gets inside, switches hands. Can't finish and down with the rebound, Delorier, who looks like 
a much improved player this year, and a guy who could have a much larger role for the Blue Devils this year. Now away from the ball, Trent is called for the foul. Gary Trent Jr. just picked up that foul, but when he drove here and was able to draw Cassius Winston to try to stop that penetration, that left goal wire wide open at the top of the key. And his shot preparation, he was ready to shoot when the ball arrived. Pretty good for a freshman. That is the second foul on Trent. He will stay in the game, and Duke stays in the zone. Winston trying to get possession. Langford with a fadeaway won't stay down. And it belongs to the Spartans, and Bagley might have taken a, an elbow or a, some sort of a shot to the face. As you can see, he is down and in considerable discomfort right now. It was Bagley and Carter battling for the rebound, it looked like. Oh, and actually, his own teammate got him. There was Delorier yep. with the right hand. Looked like he got a finger. Looked like it was his left eye there. Or was it his right eye? Right eye, yep. And Bagley is still down, and the other players on the court will head to their respective benches while Bagley gets a little bit of medical attention, obviously in a lot of discomfort. Marvin Bagley, the third, 6'11, 234, freshman out of Phoenix, and uh, a guy many believe has a chance to be the number one overall pick in the NBA draft, assuming that he is a, a one and done. He certainly has that kind of talent, that kind of ability. Second game tonight, number seven, Kentucky, the Wildcats, with the youngest team that John Calipari's ever had. So think about that for a second with all the freshman laden teams that he's had. They'll take on a team with a lot more experience, the fourth rank. Kansas Jayhawks and it will be the college football playoff top 25 show with Reese and the guys coming up between the game. So Reese is doing some double duty. He's got his basketball buddies at halftime. He's got his football buddies between the game and he's got he's got a well quaffed a look as always. He's always sharp. Bagley up and will slowly make his way off the court. Inadvertent poked finger in the eye from his teammate Javon Delore and Bagley to the bench. And hopefully, this is something that is not serious and will not keep him out for too long. Carter is back into the game for Bagley. Michigan is going to be helped uh, off the court. They're going to take him back to the locker room. And Michigan State against this zone has to get better penetration. They have to get into the lane, whether by the dribble or the pass. They've been spending too much time passing around the zone instead of in the middle of it. A turnover. Numbers for Duke. Duval will finish. That kind of turnover drives Tom Izzo crazy. He calls that a turnover for a touchdown. One pass, a Michigan State pass, and Duke's taking it the other way. It is now a 13 to nothing run for the Blue Devils. And some really good play by Duke, but also Michigan State shooting itself in the foot. Bridges called for the offensive foul. Really good job by Grayson Allen moving his feet to maintain that guarding position. But Javin Delorier, who's playing on the baseline, playing up top, and with that length, knocking it away. And Trayvon Duval, the freshman, is strong and athletic. First two games, Trayvon Duval, 20 assists, only one turnover. 6'3 freshman out of Newcastle, Delaware. Part of that outstanding freshman class, the Blue Devils have four of them starting for Duke. Duval, no. Tip, no. And over the back, we get a call going against Deloria. So Tom Izzo talking up Bridges. Bridges also getting some words from Tom Tom Nairn, who's in a backup role now behind Winston. Those are the two co-captains for the Spartans. Bridges, the sophomore, and Nairn, the senior. Well, Tom Tom Nairn, one of the best leaders in the country. 
and has essentially moved aside a bit so that Cassius Winston can take over at the point. But right now, Michigan State's got to be more in attack mode. Carter in some traffic, off balance, gets it to go, and Michigan State with its first points in about five and a half minutes. That was a long drought. Shoot a big knee brace on the left knee of Ben Carter. That twice surgically repaired left knee. And a guy who maybe doesn't figure to get a ton of playing time, but a very smart, fundamentally sound player off the bench for the Spartans. So ben Carter getting the ball inside and sticking with it, pivoting around and able to get that over Wendell Carter. And on the other end, Wendell Carter is doing a nice job of being really active and making Ben Carter guard him and drawing a lot of that attention. Duke's now gone to a bigger lineup today. They've got Bolden in there up front along with Carter and Delorier. Allen freed up for a three. That was a big time move by Grayson Allen. Defender went over the top. He bumped back toward the corner and wide open for the shot. That was a great read of the defense by Grayson Allen. You know, All-American caliber player was a sophomore. Obviously took things took a step backwards last year in his junior season. Had a suspension, had some injuries. But Allen, and it's very early, it's just the third game for the Blue Devils, off to a great start this year. And a travel is called on Duval, who didn't understand that call. Now that looked like he got fouled, but Grayson Allen, watch how he comes off this screen set by Marquise Bolden, and Joshua Lankford goes over the top of the screen. He just bumps back or fades back just a little bit to the corner. And he is always ready to shoot when he catches it. He gets it right in that shooting pocket and goes straight up. He's got a great shooting stroke. And Duke continues to stay in that zone. And why wouldn't they? It has given the Spartans a lot of problems. Well, especially since Michigan State on this young season has not shot the ball well at all. They're going to look here. Langford misses the three. And we have a foul going against the Blue Devils. It'll be on Deloria to take us to immediate timeout. Michigan State early. Duke since. Ten-point lead, Blue Devils. Well, like every program, the Duke Blue Devils want to get the kids from the surrounding area. And they've gotten some great ones from the state of North Carolina. But obviously, they are a national program. And they can recruit all over the country. And they have recruited with great success all over the country. And for the fourth time in five years, this going into next year, because next year's uh, the vast majority of kids have committed for next year, the Blue Devils have had or are going to get the number one ranked recruit in the country. Uh, this year, it's Bagley, who's still back in the locker room having his eye looked at it. Next year, it'll be a young man by the name of R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett, a Canadian, and a, a, an absolutely great prospect. And I would submit that, that Duke and, and Kentucky and Kansas, they get all their players from the exact same area, the top of every recruiting list. That's right. R.J. Barrett from Mississauga, Ontario, just west of Toronto. His dad was an awfully good player. Rowan Barrett could really shoot it. Duke stays in the zone. Nice kick by Carter. But look at the size out there with Wendell, with Wendell Carter guarding Langford out on the wing. That's a 6'9 guy out of the corner with closing fast. Now that ball hit Teddy Valentine, one of the officials, but he was standing out of bounds. Anytime the ball touches anything out of bounds, it is deemed out of bounds, so Michigan State keeps it. Langford for three. Michigan State has to make a shot outside the paint. They've not, they haven't, they might have made, what, one shot outside the painted area? And that's not going to get it done against most anybody good. Langford will go to the bench. McQuaid back in, so it's McQuaid, Bridges, Winston trying to keep his teammates' spirits up here. Jackson and Carter for the game for the Spartans, who had an early lead, but are now down double figures. So double stack low. Duval. Duke has two great shooters, Allen and Trent. Will there be another guy who can make consistent threes for a program that we've come to associate with making a lot of threes? Well, Duke is not going to be the same kind of perimeter shooter, a uh, shooting team that they have been in years past. They've been guard dominated and perimeter dominated in years past where you had four guys on the floor that could make three, four, five threes in a game each. They don't have that this year, but the guys they have that can shoot it, you mentioned Gary Trent Jr., Grayson Allen, both those guys can make five or more in a game. 
But they need to get the ball inside, play inside out. Their strength is in the paint, on the glass, and running the floor. Jackson from the baseline, and maybe not the most likely guy to break the drought and knock one down, but the Spartans will take it. Boy, that's amazing. Duval now, Bolden comes down with a Michigan State bench furious. There was no over the back call, and the end result, a play later, is a foul on the Spartans. Well, he went over him. I don't necessarily know that he was on his back. That just looked like good, hard rebounding from this angle. Well, he went over him, yep. but I don't think he was on his back there. The now, foul on Ben Carter was second. The one thing Jackson did not do, and that'll show, uh, that'll be shown to him a thousand times on film, he didn't turn and block out. Now, Michigan State calls that cutting out. That's the term that Tom Izzo uses. And he wants his guys to turn and crack the guy behind him. And really what Jaron Jackson Jr. did, because it's always worked for him, is he just turned to go after the ball. Right. He was big enough and just could out jump everybody on the high school level. A different game here. Golden misses them both. Yeah, at this level, he can only out jump almost everybody. <laughs> That's right. As you said, there are some athletes in this game. One of them's got the ball right now in the bridges. He'll take a three. And they're back within four. Doesn't the world look different when the ball goes through the net? All of a sudden, they're slapping the floor on defense. The Spartans fans are on their feet. Allen the drive and the kick. Duval. Another offensive rebound for Duke, but Bolden rejected. Still working hard. But here come the Spartans. Jackson feeling it. Hitting it. Nine oh one Spartans with Jaron Jackson Jr. hitting a couple of threes. Now Miles Bridges hit a big three for Michigan State, sandwiched between a couple of threes for the freshman Jaron Jackson Jr. Now hands up all of us that thought that Jaron Jackson Jr. was going to knock the lid off the bucket for Michigan State. I mean, this young man has got a lot of game. Shoots a bit of a knuckleball, and he's going to be working on that shot. But it looks awfully good right now. Three straight threes by Michigan State. And all of a sudden, the Spartans have a different vibe than they had two minutes ago. Trent with a pull-up. Tough shot. And the Spartans have a chance to take the lead. Middle wide open. Jackson in there from Ward along the baseline behind the zone. Down to 10. He's just throwing around the perimeter. That's where he's got to get. It'll be McQuay. Can he get a shot off the kick inside? And the reverse for Ward. Last 10 seconds of the shot clock. A very effective attack of the zone. And all of a sudden, an 11-0 run has put Michigan State back on top. Carter cross-court. Duval. Another miss from beyond the arc. See, Duval should have taken that shot right away. He was wide open when he got that relocation pass from Wendell Carter. Again, patience from Michigan State as they probe the zone. Tipped. And Jackson taken down. Pretty good job there by Jaron Jackson Jr. going after the ball. His pursuit of it led to that foul. And here's one of the rule changes in basketball that we're going into the bonus, so... It won't impact here, but on a foul, instead of the shot clock being reset up to 30, it's just going to go up to 20 this year in a defensive foul. Just an effort again to get more possessions. Why give them 30 if they've already got the ball? Exactly. In the front court, so. and, and FIBA rules have done that for a long time. Yep. And also FIBA rules, when you get an offensive rebound, 
they have a 24 second clock you only get a reset to 14 right and that's one thing that college basketball so should look at offensive rebound a reset to 20 and that's it because as you say you don't have to bring the ball up from the backboard but again it's bonus here so it doesn't apply here but just pointing out one of the rule changes going in to this season jackson is at the line misses the front end we still have not seen the return of bagley joshua lankford has done a very good job guarding grayson allen Boy, DeLorean was wide open. He gets it now and puts it home. Dick Ward just fell asleep defensively and was taken advantage of. Pass knocked away. That's got to happen after a reversal. Boy, how about Jaron Jackson Jr. knocking that ball away? The long arms of Jackson. Number one, number two, and a one-point game. not just a night of basketball it's also a night for college football the college football playoff top 25 rankings will be released between the games tonight live here on ESPN Reese and the guys will bring it to you one of the guys Herbie standing by with Maria that's right if the rankings are being released that can only mean one thing Herbie's at a basketball game yeah. <laughs> in the middle of football season okay yeah. with number one going down last week I mean what's the shakeup that we're gonna see I mean I, they're probably gonna have Alabama at one I would think I, I personally have Oklahoma up there because of Baker Mayfield I can't wait to see what happens to teams like Notre Dame, Georgia, after disappointing losses. How far down do they go? I think there's going to still be up to eight or nine teams that still are alive with just three weeks of football to go. All right, we've got plenty more coming with Herbie, Joey Galloway, Booger McFarland's here. They'll all be with Reese, and we're going to take a look at those rankings with you guys. It'll be a good time, absolutely. Well, anytime Reese is in control, we're in good shape. Just ask Jay. He knows that. You sure about that? Okay. We'll go with you on that one, Herbie. Enjoy the rest of the game. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to know it's, if it's harder for Reese to control his basketball group or his football group. Oh, football, because there are so many more brilliant minds on the basketball side. <laughs> Present company included. <laughs> excluded, excluded. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Hey, I want to know where is UCF in that? If every game counts, they've won every game. Wisconsin and UCF should be up there. And Jay will reveal his picks in the second half. He is championing the cause of the undefeated. Fade away, Allen Short. Well, these offensive rebounds that Michigan State is giving up to Duke are killing the Spartans. I mean, Duke's only shooting 28, 27% from the field, but their second chance opportunities like crazy. It's 14 offensive rebounds right now for Duke, and not just the big guys. The guards are getting in there and getting rebounds. And if there's one thing that gets under the skin of Tom Izzo, it's not rebounding well, and they are being demolished on the glass right now. Goldwire at the line. So he's out there with Duval right now and Allen in the backcourt. Trent has gone to the bench. Duke is deeper up front than they are in the backcourt. You mentioned this is a very different kind of looking Duke team. The way it's put together, a lot more bigs and maybe not as many shooters. Tom Tom Nairn. Nice screen by Kenny Goins taking Javin Delorier totally out of the play and opening up the bucket for Nairn. You know, for an old man, he's still got pretty good wheels. The he senior, does. <laughs> the senior getting down the court in a hurry. Duval might have been deflected. We've got a call. And now Goings and Duval both scrapping down on the court. Yeah, that call was late, but it was a good call. Yeah, there was contact up top by Nairn. And it was just a late call. There's nothing wrong with a late call as long as it's the right call. And from my seat, that was the right call. Yeah, got we're all over his arm. Yeah. Teddy Valentine comes in from the back, back end and makes the call, but he was right. So Duval back to the free throw line. The Blue Devils, and again, small sample size alert in their first two games of the season against Elon and Utah Valley, shot 46% as a team from the free throw line. And they're 7 for 12 tonight, and now DeLaurier is called for the foul. Michigan State at their workout today worked on free throw blockouts. Now they do that all the time. That, that's a that's a big thing. Game day they work on free throw blockouts. But because of what you just mentioned, that Duke has not been shooting free throws very well on this season, free throw blockouts become even more magnified in this type of game. Number three on Delorier, he goes to the bench. Our first look tonight at Antonio Vrankovic, a seven foot junior from Croatia, and again it bears repeating. We still have not seen Marvin Bagley the third. Never mind uh, get back into the game. We haven't even seen him come back to the bench. 
uh, after getting poked in the eye by his teammate inadvertently a little bit earlier. Coming up at the half, it's the Alfa Romeo halftime report. Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, there's Jay Will. Uh, We'll talk about, among other things, the three UCLA freshmen. They're on their way back, back in the U.S. by now. What may lie ahead for them? Herbie will preview the college football rankings. And, of course, a look ahead of the second game tonight between Kentucky and Kansas. What a great event this has been for seven years now. No, it's fantastic. And this is the way to tip off a great college basketball season. And Langford staying in front of Grayson Allen. Trent. Doesn't get the bounce, and a foul underneath going against Ward, trying to hold off Rankovich. So many big guys that Duke can bring into the game, and even with Marvin Bagley the third after getting poked in the eye by Javon Delorier, it, it's been at least, what, eight minutes of game time that he has not been available. Yep. But that doesn't mean that Duke doesn't have other big guys to put in. There are a lot of big bodies, and they are going hard to the offensive glass, and Michigan State has not been able to keep Duke off the glass. Brankovic spent his summer playing for the Croatian national team as we've got a newcomer into the game now for Michigan State. Our first look at Xavier Tillman, 6'8", 260 out of Grand Rapids. And again, to your point, you know, they don't make freshmen like they used to. Tillman sure doesn't look like a freshman. He looks like Al Anaconda. <laughs> Number 23 and a half. Both coaches going deep into their benches. Two-point guard look. Tum Tum Nairn cashes Winston to both of the game for the Spartans. That's a lob. Boy, Tillman was wide open on the lob. Langford. Winston for three. And it will be... I don't think it was a foul. I think it was just over the back. Yeah, up over and off the base of the shot clock. So it's Duke ball. On that ball reversal when Tum Tum Nairn was coming off that little double screen on the opposite side. You get a guy coming into the middle of the lane and one going to the bucket. And then the guy going to the bucket is usually open. And that was Xavier Tillman. He was wide open and he was just missed. Both of these teams learning a lot about themselves. Another block. Man, can Bridges get up there. Miles Bridges blocks jump shots. He is so quick and explosive off the floor. Well, that's a big time block. How many guys in basketball, let alone college basketball, can make that play? The Spartans, Jay, have eight block shots in the first half of this game. Allen and Bridges stays down on the shot fit. Good switch. Switch back. Left hand, Allen, a little bit short. Nairn, push ahead, Langford gets it to go. But Grayson Allen went right into the chest of the defender, and Allen was the one that got knocked back. Well, this is quite a comeback from Michigan State. They looked dead in the water earlier in this half. Brankovich, good position inside. A sweet feed from Duval. Number one and number two in a one-point game here in Chicago with Kansas and Kentucky still to come in the second game today. Miles Bridges needs to be aggressive offensively. He needs to get a shot. He's just been too quiet. He's too good of a player to be this quiet. Tillman at the elbow. Touch pass near him. Langford three. <laughs> Basket looks a lot bigger for the Spartans than it did earlier in the half. They couldn't buy one from the perimeter. Allen elevates and draws another foul outside the arc. And for the second time tonight, we'll head to the free throw line for three. Just a smart play. Now, Allen may have sold that, but he got hit. And you can't, if you're putting pressure on a perimeter shooter, you cannot, he hit him right on the, right on the arm. Now, Allen sold it. He didn't need to go down, but so what? That is right on the arm. There's no question about it. Absolutely. And when Tom Izzo sees it, Later tonight or tomorrow morning, he'll see that. So Allen is a very good free throw shooter. Shooter heads to the line for three. And now the officials have gone to the monitor. They might be looking at two or three. Yeah. And apparently they're looking not at the foul, but at the last Michigan State basket by Langford. Is it a two or three? And it looks like a three, which is what it was ruled initially. I don't know. It looked like his toe might be on the line there. They're going to have to. I didn't see a gap, but I thought it was a three when he let it go. 
Nope, there's a gap there. Yeah. So that should stand. You're right, that is a three. That's a great angle there. We can't tell anything there. The two side angles, it's the one from the top where you can see a little bit of a gap between the shoe and the line. So the three will stand for Langford, and at the other end, now Grayson Allen to the line for three. Three years ago, when Duke won the national championship, it was Quinn Cook, a senior, and so many great freshmen. Okafor, Winslow, Jones, and then late in the season and into the NCAA tournament, Allen really burst onto the scene as a freshman. Now he's the senior with all the freshmen here in the 2017-18 season. I believe one of the things that's going to lead to a, a great year for Grayson Allen, one, he's a senior. We mentioned that he's refreshed from all that happened last year and has turned the page. But also, he's got a true point guard to play with now. Trayvon Duvall comes in here to take over the ball handling responsibilities, and that lets Grayson Allen become a scorer that can hunt his shot. He's yep. not worrying about just setting up everyone else. That's Duvall's job. And that takes a lot off the plate of Grayson Allen. Alex O'Connell into the game for the first time for Duke. 6'6", six, six freshman out of Roswell, Georgia, wearing number 15. Into the final minute. And the first half that has seen each team go into a drought and then go on a run. Somebody's got to get into that middle. This has been an active zone. Steal by Duval, and he's off to the races. Well, Tom Izzo has got to be livid right now. But Duke has had difficulty scoring against Michigan State in the half court, and there have been a number of turnovers that have led to runouts and he calls it turnovers for touchdowns. You can't guard a runout. And you can see him pleading with his players in the Michigan State huddle. It has been impressive to watch Duke with their length and their activity in this zone. This has not been a passive zone defense with a bunch of freshmen. It has been more of an attacking zone defense. Well, Marvin Bagley the third went out right around the midway point of the first half after getting poked in the eye and Michigan State has played a lot better and they've gone on a bit of a run with Bagley out of the game. Well, once Bagley went out, then it was Jaron Jackson Jr. that took the lid off the basket. He hit a three, Miles Bridges hit a three, and then Jackson with another. Jaron Jackson Jr. in his first game against North Florida had 13 points. 13 rebounds, four blocks, three assists, and two steals. Pretty good debut, and he has carried it forward in what will be one of the biggest games that Michigan State plays all year long. The Spartans can hold for the final shot of the first half. And Tom Izzo usually great after a timeout and drawing something up. Nairn got a wide open man. It's Langford. And Duke's got time. Up to the rim. Down to two seconds. Deep one for Allen. Got it! Grayson Allen caps off a 14-point first half with pretty close to a 30-footer to give Duke a four-point lead. Michigan State had momentum and did not handle the end of the half well. On the flip side, Duke handled it about as well as you can. Well, that's a big-time shot by Grayson Allen and a great pass. Grayson Allen with a big first half. The Blue Devils end the half on an 8-0 run and a game of runs. And they've got a four-point lead on Michigan State with 20 minutes to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. State Farm Champions Classic, the first game of two tonight from Chicago. Number one Duke, number two Michigan State in a game of runs that saw the Spartans lead early. Then Duke came back, took the lead. Michigan State roared back after they were down by as many as 10. They took the lead, but Grayson Allen had a big first half. Duke with a four-point lead going to the second half. This is an ESPN Sonic blockbuster. Heading to the second half, number one Duke 38, number two Michigan State 34. 
One of the big stories of the first half, though, the injury to Duke's outstanding freshman, a big man, Marvin Bagley the third, inadvertently poked in the eye by his teammate, Javin Delorier. He was taken to the locker room, got some medical attention. He is back on the bench, but that's it right now. Maria Taylor has the latest. And I'm told, Dan, by assistant coach John Shire, that Marvin Bagley will not be returning to the game. They're just calling it an eye injury. And after athletic training staff looked at him through the better part of that first half, decided that he would not be able to return. So Shire says that they're going to have to rely on guys like Bolden to really pick it up and do a better job, he believes, in transition defense. They feel like they're giving up too many easy buckets right now to Michigan State. So he's back on the bench but will not play. Hopefully it's not a serious injury and maybe it just costs him tonight. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, what's your take from the first half? Michigan State held Duke to 30% from the field, and that includes some turnovers and run-out layups. Michigan State's given up a ton of offensive rebounds, and Miles Bridges played 17 minutes in the first half, three shot attempts. Wow. That is not enough for a National Player of the Year candidate. Against this 2-3 zone, Bridges has got to be more aggressive offensively. Ready for the tip of the second half here in our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. So this 2-3 zone, which Duke has played from the opening tip, has been really effective. Bridges with a very nice find to Ward. And one of the things the zone has done, it has kept Michigan State off the foul line. You know, Duke, even though they're shooting 30%, they had 18 free throw attempts in that first half, only six for Michigan State. Good position for Carter inside, and he'll finish. Well, that's strength on strength, went right into the chest of Nick Ward. That's 6'10", 259 against 6'8", 245. Bridges knocks down his second three of the night. And that's really the next step for Miles Bridges, is to be more aggressive. Well, Tom Izzo shouldn't have to wear him out at halftime to take more shots. Jackson got a piece of that. If they give him a block, that would be the ninth block in the game for Michigan State. And we'll have an early substitution here in the second half. Gavin Schilling will take the place of Ward. I can't remember a big guy at Michigan State that had the physical profile of Jaron Jackson Jr. To have that kind of length and, and that athleticism as well. Allen wide open. He's got 16. Grayson Allen looks great. He looks absolutely great. Do you expect, if there are no issues of any kind for him, that he'll have the kind of year he does as a sophomore when he was one of the very best players in the country? I absolutely think he will. Uh, last year, he only averaged 14 points a game, didn't shoot it well, but he was injured. And he, he had to play the point. He had the ball in his hands more often, all that responsibility. How about Jackson? That's his third three of the game. This kid has got a ceiling that is ridiculous. How good is he? It doesn't look that pretty coming out, but he's finding the bottom of the net. And we got a foul against the Spartans. And right now with Marvin Bagley the third out of the game and not returning, Wendell Carter is starting to assert himself inside. But wide open was Jaron Jackson Jr. I did not expect him to knock down three threes in this game. Uh, we've learned to expect the unexpected from these super talented freshmen. Bagley on the bench will not return with a right eye injury. Carter at the line for Duke. <laughs> Meanwhile, game two is coming up. Dickie B will join me here at the table for Kansas and Kentucky. The Hall of Famer, Bill Self, going to the Hall of Fame back in September. That means that all four coaches here at the State Farm Champions Classic are now officially Hall of Famers really amazing this caliber of coach this caliber of team and he needs to turn around and shoot that Jackson was wide open Winston misses the three and the loose ball down to Duval Allen's open again just a great shooter catches it sets his feet never took his eyes off the rim Bridges will pull up from 18 feet away, around and out. And Delorier giving Duke some good minutes. He's a very proficient rebounder. But Carter's got to get the ball. He was wide open underneath. Established that early post. And you know, Grayson Allen has a, a magnificent stroke. Just an outstanding shooter and a great pass ahead here by Trayvon Duval. Right over Cassius Winston. And 
This young man sets his feet, squares up to the basket. That's just a beautiful stroke and nothing rushed about it. So Jay, he's now attempted 18 threes this season. He's converted on 13 of them. You know what that means to me? Mm. Take more threes. <laughs> yeah. Stepping out of bounds is Carter. Well, you always said, even at his at his very peak as a sophomore, you know, he would put his shoulder down, he would drive, he would get into the paint, he would draw fouls, and you always said he's great at that. But what he might be best at is a shooter. I think he's a better shooter, and, and that's where his future is. I mean, he's a courageous driver and likes to get it to the rim, but he's not, he's not a great finisher in traffic. He's been much better this year, but that's not his strength. Shooting is his strength, and he has proven that on this early season. Duke has been in the zone the entire night. Winston gets inside, kicks it back out, bridges for three. And down with a strong rebound is Carter. Those are two big bodies, Delorier and Carter going after that rebound. Look at Duval. Tipped away, and we got a whistle. Hard to hear the whistle as Teddy Valentine had to blow the whistle for the second time to get people to take notice. And the foul is going to go. His second team's third. On Nick Ward. And that'll send Duvall to the line. A little confusion. Ward's trying to make sure that the foul was on him. Initially, he was said to be on 34, but that's chilling. He's not in the game, and it is indeed on Ward number 44. Tomorrow night, got an NBA doubleheader coming your way here on ESPN. It'll be LeBron and the Cavs taking on the Hornets at 8 o'clock Eastern, and then a game two. The likes of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid lead the Sixers into the Staples Center to take on the Lakers. How good has Ben Simmons been, even though it's two years out of school yeah. in his rookie year? Ward will get the bounce. So you're starting to see from Simmons, you know, 17, 9, and 8 all put up in the same game. He's, he's ridiculous. Yeah. And he, he doesn't even shoot it yet, yeah. and I think he's going to shoot it much better. Nick Ward always trying to get back to that left hand, the right shoulder. Duvall passed up the shot for the layup. And Duke's lead it back to six. This is the first one versus two meeting since Kansas beat Oklahoma in triple overtime January of 16. Reverse for Allen, and he's got 21. And Michigan State. Has to do a better job of attacking this zone. That was a terrible pass by Miles Bridges and led to another run out for Duke. Tom Israel will use a timeout. Duke's lead is up to eight here early in the second half. And they're being led by their senior, Grayson Allen, who's got a game high 21. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zales. Tis the season to save and sparkle more than ever. Year after year, the talk is of freshmen, but it's a senior who is leading Duke tonight. Grayson Allen, both on the drive and on the perimeter shot, having a big, big night. Well, he's done it with a, a very good defender, Joshua Langford on him most of the game and Grayson Allen 21 points in this game three of three from three-point range he's hit all six of his free throws and six of ten from the field in just 24 minutes of playing time he has been as efficient as you can be has made all three of his threes has made all six of his free throws and six for ten overall from the field so how does Michigan State respond as they continue to try to find some shots dealing with this 2 3 zone. They have to get the ball into the middle, They're trying to screen the zone. Ben Carter, a very good screener, but the ball's on one side of the floor too long. To make this zone shift, you have to move the ball. And right now it's just moving around on the perimeter without much penetration. They're going to have to force a shot up. And stepping out of bounds is Jackson. He will turn it over, and that'll take us to immediate timeout. Here's four minutes into the second half. Jayhawks in the house. Devontae Graham at a KU taking on Big Blue in game two. The Chicago number one Duke and number two Michigan State. A loss for the Duke basketball family as yesterday the father of associate head coach Jeff Capel passed away of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and, and uh, Jeff, the father, 
a man you knew well, a very good coach in his day, uh, especially at Old Dominion. Uh, uh, Jeff Capel is not with the team here tonight. We send our condolences to him and the entire Capel family. Our deepest sympathies to the entire Capel family. Jeff Capel Jr. was a, a giant in basketball and not only an outstanding coach, but just a, a great man that mentored so many in the game, coaches, players, and the like, and raised two outstanding sons, Jeff Capel the third and Jason Capel both were have been head coaches and uh, our, our thoughts and prayers to the entire Capel family because Jeff Capel Jr. was a uh, just a wonderful wonderful man I remember the game last year with Jeff Capel Jr. where father and son sat together on the Duke bench Jeff Capel Jr. Jeff Capel the third during the game uh, during last season so again our, our deepest sympathies to the Capel family as we check in with Maria can you remember, guys, Jeff Capel began his coaching career as an assistant to his father at Old Dominion back in 2000. And when I reached out to Jason Capel and asked how he wanted his father to be remembered, he said, remember him as an Army veteran that coached at every level. His first high school coaching gig was in 1980 at Pinecrest High School and packed countless lives and was married to their mother, Jerry, for 45 years. The coaches are wearing an ALS pin as well as a red bracelet in support of Jeff, who could not be here today. All right, Maria, thank you. And uh, not known yet, or at least not publicly known, when the service will be. And probably uh, in the next few days. And about an hour and a half away from Durham, right? In Fayetteville, who's the, uh, the family home. Eight point lead here for Duke as Carter checks out for Michigan State. You know, Dan, while we have been praising the play of Grayson Allen, and rightfully so, Allen has been outstanding. Trayvon Duvall has been a big factor in Allen playing so well because of his, his fantastic ball handling responsibilities, how he's handled that. Allen again. And away from the ball, we got a call going against the Blue Devils. Trayvon, looks like it's Carter underneath. Trayvon Duvall has got seven assists in this game, only two turnovers. And he had 20 assists in his first two games with just one turnover. And for a, an 18 year old freshman to walk onto this stage and play with that kind of efficiency is incredibly impressive. And, and the Duke uh, SID's office telling us that the 27 assists for Duvall in his first three games, no Duke freshman has ever had that many assists in his first three games. Nairn. Bounce pass, Ward, good patience, and gets it to go. You can see, it doesn't take long to watch Nick Ward to see, as much as he had a lot of good moments last year as a freshman, he's come back as a better player as a sophomore. He's a big-time player. What a great shot by Allen. Went right into the chest of McQuaid, bumped him back a little bit, but still was able to keep his balance and go straight up. Ward was calling for the ball. Looked like he had Bolden pinned, didn't get a feed. Goings back in. He hasn't played a lot tonight. Guy who had to play the five spot a lot last year because Michigan State was so undersized. Bridges knocks down another three. He's been looking for a shot in the second half. Did not look for it at all in the first half. Only three shot attempts in 17 minutes. Blue Devils keep it alive on the glass again, but Ward corrals it. Now they're looking to run. Tum Tum Nairn with a push. Now he needs some help. Can't pick up your dribble. Ward had it slapped away. It will stay with the Michigan State. And bringing that ball down. You got to go straight up. He might have gotten hit on the arm. 18 to shoot as they inbounded to Winston in the backcourt. And Bridges has to be aggressive, but so too does Matt McQuaid. And Allen went for the steal, committed the foul, and then he's going to go over and offer to help Winston out. And he'll get booed because he's Grayson Allen, but it, it's definitely a foul, but it's nothing over the top at all. A common foul called on Allen, and... 20 seconds again, one of the new rules. If the shot clock's under 20 and the defense commits a foul, they don't reset it to 30. It just goes back to 20. Duvall now called for a foul. Second on him, fifth on the team. Now 
Winston the floater. Yes. Well, there's some aggressive action with dribble penetration. And Michigan State usually does a very good job of screening against the zone. And they need to continue to do that because the dribble can be a really a big weapon and be very debilitating for his own defense. And in a game of runs, it's Michigan State on a run right now. Duke takes time. It's a little ball screen, and you really have to step up and fake at the ball here. And that didn't happen by Gary Trent Jr. It just sort of melted on the screen, and Trent's got to stop that penetration and then recover. Jay, you were talking about the night that Trayvon Duval, the freshman, is having. It's time now to check out our assist of the game, brought to you by State Farm. And Duval's got eight assists already in this game. Well, Trayvon Duval, he's 6'3 and very, very strong. Got huge hands. The question coming into this season was his decision making. Could he lead from the point guard position, not turn the ball over, and be steady? And he has been beyond steady. He's been spectacular. The number one ranked point guard in his class, the number six incoming recruit in the ESPN 100. He's out of the IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. Kept alive on the glass by Carter, but then knocked away to back from the Spartans. What was the last time you saw Michigan State give up this many second shots? Uh, just never count yeah, as an answer? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. never. It might be never. Well, you know what they'll be working on in practice. They might so does not take kindly to giving up rebounds. Good shot fake. Winston, another floater. Wide left, Duke ball. McQuaid needed to shoot that. A great shot fake. You got to put that thing up. Duvall left hand. Carter working hard. Down to the Spartans. Only briefly, though. Back to the Blue Devils. And now turned over again. And here comes Ward. How about that for a sequence? Not only hustle, Dan, but alertness. Michigan State comes up with the ball, and Tom Izzo wearing out Matt McQuaid about not shooting that ball after that last shot fake. But after Michigan State came up with it, that's a great pass by McQuaid getting it to Winston and passing it ahead. Not a very good foul by Gary Trent. If you're going to foul here, you cannot let the guy you foul, you can't let him complete the play. Ward off to a great start here on this young season. Had a very good game. And Michigan State's first game against North Florida didn't miss a shot at 16 points completes the three-point play and guess what number one and number two are all tied up <laughs> Allen fouled out on the perimeter by Winston nope not Winston it was on McQuaid on McQuaid forgive me his second team's fourth. Boy, did McQuaid get a talking to. You pointed it out from Tom Izzo. I mean, he really got into him about passing up an open, an open shot. Allen, wow. feeling it. Are you kidding me? I mean, that was, that was great offense over really good defense. I mean, Matt McQuaid was right there. And McQuaid's a good perimeter defender. 26 for Grayson Allen. Michigan State may want to screen the top of this zone more. Try to turn the corner. And put a little more pressure on the, the bottom wing. And a foul inside going against the Spartans. So it'll be Duke ball with a three-point lead when we come back to Chicago. The committee of the war room talking about the college football playoff of the top 25. The rankings will be released in between game one and game two tonight, right here on ESPN. Reese Davis and the guys will bring it to you live from the United Center. They are here in Chicago, going to have a little football intermission, if you will, at the end of Michigan State Duke before Kansas, Kentucky. Mr. And Mr. Billis is branching out a little bit, talking football. Branching out. <laughs> UCF is undefeated, as are the Wisconsin Badgers. Every game counts, remember, in college football. That's, they wear themselves out telling us how every game counts. 
couple undefeated counts. UCF is right knocking on the door. Wisconsin is in. And look at that. That's the way it's going to be at the end of the season, I'm telling you. Auburn's lost two games. In my vote, they do not get in over UCF or Wisconsin. Undefeated means something. Goose egg in the right-hand column means something. And we'll find out how the committee's looking at it when Reese and the guys tell us about it between games. And as Reese said before, they don't know what the rankings are until they release them on the air. It's not like they've already got advanced knowledge. They'll find out as we find out. I just gave them advanced I'm knowledge. Sorry. <laughs> they know exactly what it should be. They just saw it. See, there's, there's the screen up top. McQuay going to the bucket. Oh! Got it! Well, he passed up the shot, but he's going to wind up with a chance for three anyways. That was opened up by that screen on the top. There was basically a ball screen up top, then they looked opposite. What a great finish by the junior from Texas. It looked better in slow-mo, didn't it? It looked great. Didn't see a whole lot of contact up there. It looked like Frankovic missed him completely. First points of the night for McQuaid, who, as we mentioned last year, uh, had to deal with some injuries coming into the season as well. He didn't shoot the ball, didn't score as much last year as he did as a freshman. He can be a very good shooter. He's a good defender. Ward! And he's headed to the free throw line. Just overpowers Duke in getting into the middle of that lane. And Duke still going without Marvin Bagley the third. If you weren't with us in the first half, got poked in the eye inadvertently by one of his teammates and will not return tonight. By one of the very few offensive rebounds for Michigan State in this game. Just the sixth offensive board for the Spartans. Duke with 19 offensive rebounds. Now Marvin Bagley only played 10 minutes before he was poked in the eye. He had five offensive rebounds in those 10 minutes. The foul, by the way, Jay, was on Gary Trent Jr. It is his fourth, and he will stay in the game with 11 minutes left. The Blue Devils don't have a ton of depth, or at least at this point, a ton of experience depth in the backcourt. So they should go right at Gary Trent. Next time down the floor, I can't leave the ball there. Allen with a rare miss tonight. Delorier the offensive rebound. Allen left hand. Spartans ball. Langford bumped by Duvall. Much more focused attack by Michigan State. The shot fakes getting Duke off balance, then driving the ball. A vast improvement in the second half in the attack of this zone. Michigan State shooting well over 50% in the second half. And how about the foul disparity as now Delorier goes out and Carter comes back in. Nine fouls committed by the Blue Devils here in the second half to just four for Michigan State. And now Trent will sit down with four fouls as O'Connell, the freshman, back in. O'Connell kind of an interesting guy for Duke, don't you know? He can really shoot it. He's, he's a little bit thin, but he can really shoot it. He's very athletic, long arms, and a really enthusiastic, energetic player. He's going against some bigger bodies. He, he looks rail thin out yeah. there standing next to Nick Ward. He is listed at 6'6", 171. Ward ate more for lunch than Alex <laughs> O'Connor. <laughs> we got ourselves a game. Ball needs to go inside to Wendell Carter. Let him touch it. Duval threads the needle and wow. lays it in with the left hand. What a move. The over pursuit because he stopped on a dime. Nice ball movement. Ward will head back to the free throw line. Boy, what a nice pass by Jackson. Well, they're getting the ball into the middle and then looking baseline immediately. The passing has been much more crisp in this second half for the Spartans than it was in the first. Not nearly as many turnovers. Well, this is a fabulous move. Just stopping on a dime, and Nick Ward just over-pursues a bit. You get that much mass moving toward the baseline, then you stop that quickly. It's going to keep going. Ward now three for six from the line on the night. Brankovic out to Laurier back in. And Carter 
And Jackson, you want to talk about two athletes going up after that rebound. Can you believe those guys are just teenagers? No. And two guys projected as lottery picks. You know, the ESPN 100 of the top 60 incoming freshmen in the ESPN 100, of the top 60 of them, 15 are playing here tonight on one of these four teams. And that's just in the freshman class. Yes. Well, this is uh, this is one shot blocking crew, and Javon Delorier tries to avoid getting a shot blocked, and that just makes it a little bit easier for a shot blocker to, to block your shot. You have to go right into the contact and take up that space. Easy to say, really hard to do. We we've talked about when's the last time you ever. How about when's the last time you saw the Duke Blue Devils have 11 of their shots blocked in one game? When I was playing. <laughs> And you're taking credit for most of that? Well, I got my <laughs> shot blocked a lot. <laughs> Jackson. Looking around like he got fouled. Left it well short. And now we got a push on Jackson. Just a little bit late getting back. Again, as he turned to one of the officials to complain about the lack of a foul call. And he winds up committing a foul on the other end. You're right, just that little hesitation. He didn't run in a straight line. Javin Delorier did, just that little push in the back. And Teddy Valentine right on top of the play. Jackson to the bench, Kenny Goins back in. Allen, quick elevation. And it's over the top of the backboard and back to Michigan State. He has taken some very good shots tonight. That one might have been a little bit ill-advised. It was quick. But the way he's shooting the ball tonight, how can you blame him? That's the thing. He can make those. and. You know, if he doesn't shoot it, who else will right now? Gary Trent on the bench with four fouls. And this is not a great shooting lineup. O'Connell can shoot it, but Trayvon Duvall, not a perimeter shooter. Winston for three. The basket is not going to count. There's a foul going against Michigan State. From well, Schilling, it looked like a legal, a legal screen. And Trent back into the game for Duke. That's the fourth on Schilling. Yeah, he's just moving into the body of wasn't much there really. That looked more like incidental contact than anything, but and Schilling back to the bench with four and Ward, who wasn't out long, right back in. One point game. Duke looking to retake the lead. We just passed the midway point of the second half with Kentucky and Kansas still to come. Duke back on top, Duval again. They well, took it to Grayson Allen's side. You can't leave Allen. And so that allowed Duval the opportunity to turn the corner and go one on one with his defender. Our seventh lead change of the night. Rejected by Carter. Boy, what a block. You hesitate for one second, and a play will be made against you. Wendell Carter Jr. guarded by Nick Ward. And fouled by Ward. Yeah, they just called him. He, he stuck his chest out into Carter just a bit. But he was in legal guarding position. That's the thing. When, when you're a big guy, when they call that on you, it is really tough to swallow. Hesitate just a bit. And that's a fantastic block. What great timing. See, he was in good legal guarding position. Unless they called two hands on him, I, I don't think that was a foul. Now, they may have called the, the fact that he, he had two hands on him. He wasn't pushing or anything. It was incidental. But anytime you have two hands on the ball handler, that's an automatic call. That may have been it. So Ward picks up his third. He goes back to the bench. But then again, as we mentioned before, what a difference a year makes for Michigan State. Ward goes out. Goins goes out. And they've still got... Carter and Jackson on the bench, and they've got Schilling or in the game. They've got Schilling on the bench. They've just got so many more big bodies than they had a year ago. Well, last year, if Ward and Goins went out, that was their whole front line. Yeah. They were playing nothing but guards. Yeah. You know, now they've got Jared Jackson Jr., obviously, and Ben Carter, Gavin Schilling. Now they've got some big bodies yeah. that they can keep coming after you with, and Xavier Tillman as well. There without Kyle Ahrens, who gave him some good minutes last year in, a, in an undersized role. He's out with a foot injury. Ben Carter is a good screener and needs to be one right now. Jackson! 
Well, give, give credit to Joshua Langford coming in from the wing, helping to keep that ball alive. Has anything you've seen tonight lead you to believe that there's any reason these teams won't be among the best in the country? No, this year? they're going to keep getting better. Yeah. But the difference is that Duke is playing without Marvin Bagley, the right. third. They get him back. How could that not be a foul there? No, con there's plenty of contact. There's a foul to be on Jackson Carter. A lot of energy on the offensive glass. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan. Every thread counts. Tonight, right about 11.30 Eastern time after the Champions Classic, it's Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. We'll have a complete breakdown of the first really huge night of the college basketball season, an interview with Ben Simmons, who's really coming into his own right now with the Sixers. And uh, Kenny Mayne meets Airman Rogers in the end zone. Also, coming up next, college football playoff top 25 rankings between games. Then game two tonight, Kentucky and Kansas. We have located Reese Davis. He is ready to take the reins and tell us what the committee is thinking right now. So here we are, number one and number two, Duke and Michigan State. The game has gone back and forth a number of times tonight. 7.47 to play. Grayson Allen with a game-high 26. And Duke with a one-point lead, despite playing most of the night without Marvin Bagley III out with an eye injury after getting poked in the eye inadvertently by a teammate. Wendell Carter, Jr., is at the line. Got nine points, nine rebounds on the night. And has done a great job protecting the rim. And Duke has played 2-3 zone the entire basketball game. And you would think in a 2-3 zone, you're going to give up a lot of offensive rebounds. And Duke has not done that. They've only given up eight to Michigan State, a great rebounding team. Yet Duke has 21 offensive rebounds on the other end. Like who would have predicted that? That's the fifth rebound of the night for Miles Bridges. He's got nine points as well on three threes as he turns it over for the fourth time tonight. And Duval with a head of steam. Another turnover for a touchdown. A bad play by Michigan State and a layup on the other end. And Trayvon Duval is having a fabulous game. That's 15 points now to go with eight assists and four steals. And Bridges... Jane, you've talked, he's just having trouble being Bridges with this zone. He's going to try to go baseline, make something happen here. Well, he needs to, when he makes a move, he needs to make a move to score. And if it's taken away from him, then he can make a pass. Well, there's never a time that I can think of that Miles Bridges should be driving to pass. A collision leaves Allen wide open, and he buries another one. So coming off that tight handoff, if you try to cut that gap, the defender fell down. Allen made a pay for it. Bridges with his fourth three of the game. And potential All-Americans here. And Allen and Bridges are trading buckets right now. Yeah, during that last break, Maria Taylor told us that Tom Izzo, in the last time out, had told Miles Bridges, it's your time. And it looks like Bridges taking that advice to heart. Because he was not aggressive in the first half. 17 minutes in the first half, three shot attempts. That is not enough. Allen, Delorier, Duval, air ball on the three. Michigan State can tie or take the lead. But ben Carter down. He looked like he just got hit there. Carter down behind the play. Boy, they're going to take a look at this. Because Ben Carter and, and Wendell Car Carter Jr. were standing side by side. And all of a sudden, we, I looked the other way and Ben Carter was down. Have no idea what happened. Let's see if we can get a look. Behind the play. And the left arm of Wendell Carter Jr. comes up and catches Ben Carter. And it's an elbow. That is an elbow. That's an elbow right to the side of the jaw it looked like. Couldn't tell whether Carter thought Carter Jr. Dukes Carter thought he was trying to free himself or something. 
But that elbow definitely hit Ben Carter right in the face. And that will, the referees are looking at it right now. That looks like more than incidental contact right. to me. So if it's a flagrant one, it's two in the ball. If it's a flagrant two, it's two in the ball, and he's out of the game. Now those two going at it hard. That's not, that is not going to be ruled a basketball play. No. And it's not going to be ruled incidental contact. No. It doesn't look like your traditional elbow. It's just sort of a flail, but that is definitely going to be a, a flagrant foul. Yeah. The ball was live, so it won't be one of those dead ball contact technical things. They should just call all those things flagrant one or flagrant yeah. two. What, what do you think, one or two? Because that's a big difference here. That's, that determines whether or not Carter stays in the game. It was certainly unnecessary and not a basketball yeah. play. I mean, it is at least a flagrant one. And right now, Ted Valentine wants to call these two Hall of Fame coaches together and give the explanation at the same time. Ramon Simpson, meanwhile, one of the officials coming over to tell Jay what it is. All right, the explanation is a live ball contact technical. Uh, they're not calling it flagrant. They're calling a live ball contact technical. So it's more than incidental, but not enough to be flagrant. But in uh, effect, it's the same thing. It's two in the ball, right? I guess. So I just I don't understand this, this sort of the, the way they're they're couching this. So Carter stays in the game. He doesn't get ejected. Winston with a couple of free throws, and then it will be Michigan State ball. But even if it's even if it's point of interruption, it was still Michigan yes, State's ball. Correct. So it's not it's not a a change in possession. Right. And that foul is the fourth on Wendell Carter Jr. So a total of five players have four fouls right now. And you can see Carter shaking up. Now, during the delay, Carter had some work done, and that's a, a little bit of medical attention, and he's still in the game. Obviously, uh, was bleeding a little bit. Bridges elevates. Down to McQuay. Michigan State again looking for the lead. Winston turns it over. Allen out ahead of the pack, and he couldn't corral it. And Michigan State dodged one there. Another turnover that should have been a layup. So Grayson Allen trying to catch up with the ball and make the play. And it just looked like he got his foot caught up, lost the ball. And Michigan State coughing the ball up in this thing like crazy. They must have 15, 16 turnovers. 15 turnovers and getting out rebounded yet. A bucket here and they've got the lead. And they've got the lead. 17 now for Bridges. Five threes in the game. Right now it's about getting stops and getting big defensive rebounds. Hand off Duval. Boy, is he a nice finisher around the rim. Oh, you let him get ahead of steam and get downhill. He is strong, long arm, big hands. He's a player. Ten ties and eight lead changes in this game. They swarm Bridges, and they get the turnover, and Carter called for the foul. And Miles Bridges is taking the ball into so many bad spots and then coughing it up. Yeah, he has had several turnovers in the second half. couple in the first half. He's trying to be aggressive, but he's just made too many bad decisions with the ball. He's committed five turnovers tonight, and then Carter sends Duvall to the free throw line. Yeah, and this isn't going to go down as one of Tom Izzo's turnovers for touchdowns, but it might as well be because Bridges put Carter in a position to foul. Now he's given up, you know, two free throws. Fortunately for Michigan State, on the 19th foul, Duvall misses the front end of the one and one. Matt McQuaid has to look to get open. He's a good shooter. 
And he's also got a great shot fake. He can keep the defense off balance. Off to Goins. Five on the clock. Bridges again. Goins with a great rebound. Boy, what a hustle play there by Kenny Goins. Winston, nice oh. look. I tell you what, if Magic's watching, he enjoyed that one. What a fabulous pass by Cassius Winston. A lot of players look, not that many see. Trent, no. Carter, yes. And Wendell Carter Jr. has played a ton of minutes in this game and has done a great job in the middle of that zone on the glass and being active looking for the ball. They're trying to do it without Bagley, who hasn't played since the midway point of the first half because of an eye injury, and now Duke has a chance to take the lead again. I wonder when Tom Izzo's going to go back with Nick Ward. Get a little more offense along the front line. Carter off to Allen. Allen blocked by Bridges. Good pass. Trent's open. Count it. What a how, stroke he's got. How about this game? College basketball season is back with a vengeance. Number one and number two living up to it here tonight. Cassius Winston. Like coming off that ball screen, splitting the defenders, and then finding Kenny Goins underneath for the dunk. You mentioned Magic Johnson. The most assists by a freshman last year. Tops in the Big Ten. And what a great pass by Grayson Allen to Gary Trent Jr. We got a ball game, partner. Well, so much talk coming into this game. Number one and number two. So many fresh faces, so much talent here with the United Center in Chicago. And this game has lived up to the hype. Duke 78, Michigan State 75. In a game that has had 11 ties and nine lead changes. We've got 3.05 to go. Duke staying with the 2-3 zone. And it's going to be important for Duke to continue to hit the glass. And Michigan State's got to pound the glass for second shots. And Ward's still on the bench for Michigan State. Tom Izzo staying with Jackson and Goins up front as they nearly turn it over. And Bridges got away with another weak pass. Bridges. Not this time. Duval switches hands. Too strong. Delorier misses the follow. But Duke comes down with a rebound. Man, oh man, Delorier's flying. Right now, Grayson Allen has got bridges on him. There he is. And he knocks down another one. He's got 32 points. Allen has been simply magnificent. Winston thought about it. McQuaid will do more than that. Can't get it to go, and it's out of bounds to Michigan State. Bridges should have picked up Grayson Allen, but he was pointing at Allen as if he wanted Jaron Jackson to go pick him up. Nobody had him. And you give a great player like Grayson Allen that kind of wide open shot, and he's going to knock that thing down. This is the third game for Duke. He's 16 out of 25 from three-point range on the season, 64%. In and out for Jackson, Duke ball. And yet another rebound by Wendell Carter Jr. And another drive by Duvall. And it'll go the other way. Uh, Duvall just took it too far in. He just should have pulled it back out. There was nothing there. One of the very few mistakes that he's made. One of the very few mistakes. Nick Ward back into the game here with a minute 50 to go. Goins to the bench. Right there, what Mike Krzyzewski wanted his point guard to do was pull the ball out. You can attack, but run some clock. If it's not there, run some clock. I mean, they got a two-possession lead right now. That was a big turnover. Tom Izzo is 1-10 and 10 in his career against Mike Krzyzewski. And Izzo says, very openly and honestly, it eats at him. They got it down to four right now with a minute 35 to go. Well, it would eat at him to lose anybody. Yep. It eats out to lose, period. Don't forget, 
between games. College football rankings top 25 with Reese and the guys. And then we'll have Kentucky and Kansas in the second game here from the State Farm Champions Class. Little horn set. Good defense by Matt McQuaid not to allow that handoff to go to Allen so he could turn that corner. Allen again. Got another one. What a night for Grayson Allen. Seven threes and 35 points. The Laurier with a steal, and it's a three on O. What a back ranking sequence right there for Michigan State. Tom Izzo, timeout. This is a 60 second timeout. Who would have thought we'd be talking about Duke as a zone team? Duke's defense has been outstanding, and Grayson Allen has been better. Off the ball screen, Nick Ward backing up, not impacting the ball, and Allen shooting right over the outstretched arm of Matt McQuaid, trying to recover, but Allen was up already, and he's been absolutely fabulous in this game. And you don't want to take too much from just one game this early in the season, but he might be putting the college basketball world on notice with the kind of season he he could have here as a senior. Well, the first two games, he's been he's been fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he's 10 of 15 from three in his first two against Elon and Utah Valley. Now he follows that up seven of 11 from three, and it's not like he wasn't challenged. He might have had one or two open ones. Everything else has been a challenge shot. He's got 75 points in Duke's first three games of the season. Don't forget, tomorrow night, an NBA doubleheader right here on ESPN. It'll be LeBron and the Cavs take it on. Kemba Walker with the Hornets at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Then on the second game, the Sixers and the Lakers. All kinds of great young stars on both teams as they try to find their way back up the NBA ladder. Coverage tips with NBA countdown charged by Mountain Dew at 7 o'clock Eastern time and also streaming live on the ESPN app. Between games, as mentioned, college football rankings top 25 show. The guys are ready to roll. They're on their phones. They're getting the info. And they're going to find out as we find out and let us know about it momentarily. 30-minute show. And then, don't go anywhere because Kansas and Kentucky are in the building. But right now, Duke has to guard the three-point line. That's the only thing that can give Michigan State a chance here. Ward. Back to his strong side with the left hand. Gets it down to seven, but they got a foul. They don't get an immediate steal. They got a foul. And finally they do, but with about seven or eight seconds coming off the clock. Winston his second. And that'll give Allen a chance to add to his totals. It's amazing to me the, the high level at which Duke has played with so many young players. I mean, you expect a, a, a really good performance from a senior, but the performances from Duke's freshmen, especially Trayvon Duvall and Wendell Carter Jr., with Marvin Bagley the third out since the 10 minute mark of the first half. Well, that bodes well for uh, for the future of this yeah. season. Bagley, as you can see, that right eye got poked in the eye in the first half, has not returned. Duval and Carter both with double doubles. Carter 12 points, 12 rebounds. How about Duval's line? 17 points and 10 assists in this game. He's also got at least four steals, I think. Yeah. He, he did a terrific job in this game. Meanwhile, Grayson Allen hasn't come out of the game tonight. He's got 37 as Bridges lays it in. Well, Mike Krzyzewski's in the Hall of Fame. He's not taking that guy out. His last win was number 1,000 at Duke. Number 1,001. Going to be particularly sweet to beat a team as good as Michigan State. Do it without one of their key players and win it in a big-time environment like this one. What a night for Grayson Allen and the Duke Blue Devils. Go to 3-0 in the season. They beat Michigan State 88 to 81 in the first game here with the State Farm Champions Classic. Tremendous performance by Grayson Allen and Duke's freshman for a young team. Well, this is an extraordinarily talented group, and they beat a really good Michigan State team. 
And Grayson Allen with an unbelievable night. Seven for 11 from three, a perfect eight for eight from the line, and 37 points in the game. Uh, a tough pill to swallow for Michigan State, a team that had the lead on a number of occasions tonight. But at the end, just too much Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen in a, a lengthy athletic zone. And Grayson Allen is standing by with Maria. All right, Grayson, you're getting all the congratulations because you played 40 minutes, had a career high 37 points. Uh, what worked for you in tonight's matchup? Um, Trayvon. <laughs> Trayvon worked for me. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's been a, a big part of me getting a lot of open shots this year. Uh, and when I get the open ones like I did at the beginning of the game, the basket gets bigger and the rest, I feel like the rest are going in. Marvin Bagley goes out early in that first half. What were you guys discussing in the locker room when you found out he was not going to be able to return to this game? Well, next man up. I mean, we, we feel for him, and I, I hope it's nothing serious. I hope he's back soon. I have no idea what it is, um, but it's next man up. We know we have a deep team, and, and Javin stepped up huge for us today, and he's so active and everywhere. He made a lot of big plays that swung the momentum. All right, you said that you want to be like Quinn Cook. You're the lone senior on this team. I mean, what have the statement that you made tonight with your performance? Uh, well, I just I just try to talk. To be honest, I, I'm I'm hoping I lose my voice one game. That's my goal. I just I just want to keep talking. And, and Gary has done a really good job of talking too, and, and being a leader as a young guy. And and so shout out to Quinn. I hope I'm doing him justice. I hope you are too. Thanks for your time, Grace. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I can understand why the smile is ear to ear after 37 points on the night for Grayson Allen and Duke with a big win beating Michigan State 88 to 81. Kentucky Kansas still to come but time now for the college football playoff top 25 presented by Northwestern Mutual. Here's Reese Davis. All right, college Dan, what a football playoff, playoff Grayson Allen. top 25 is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Remarkable performance from Grayson Allen, and now we're about to unveil the college football playoff top 25. Remember, we haven't seen the rankings, and we won't until you do. Reese Davis, Joey Galloway, hey, Booker the basketball McFarland. game. <laughs> Kirk Herbstreit. We've been told that a few times. <laughs> yeah, this is hoops, right? Yeah. Hoops right in the middle. Is? Now we'll take a little football break in the middle here right. and show you the top 25. You see two of the top four lost last week. There's going to be a shuffle. We'll have a look at these rankings in just over three minutes. Stay where you are. Top 25 coming. Going to have a new number one, and we'll fill in the top four and the two waiting on the doorstep. College football playoff top 25 is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently.